All right, so yoga in the park, here we go. Oops. So let's come into constructive rest pose. That's gonna be on your back. And you can allow your knees to tent together, allow your feet to walk as wide as the mat, and then lower yourself down onto your back. Allow your arms to rest at your sides and maybe take a sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> Start to feel yourself melt down into the earth. Feel the earth rise to meet you. Allow yourself this moment to soften. You can start to scan the body from the top of your forehead. Maybe you sweep down the body all the way down to the soles of your feet. Inviting yourself to release, surrender. And as you begin to arrive in this present moment, you might notice if you have a specific intention for your practice today, something you'd like to cultivate or to release. As things have been heating up in August, it's really a great time to study the third niyama, which is part of yoga's ethical practices called tapas. Tapas literally means self-discipline, And I just have a short reading from the book by Deborah Adele. She says, tapas means heat. It can be translated as self-discipline, spiritual effort, change, or transformation. Tapas has the sense of cooking ourselves in the fire of discipline to transform ourselves into something else. It is our determined effort to become someone of character and strength. Tapas eventually changes our nature, turning us into a cauldron that can withstand any of life's challenges. Tapas is the day-to-day -day choice to burn non-supportive habits of the body and mind, choosing to forsake momentary pleasures for future rewards. If this idea of tapas self-discipline speaks to you, you might imagine it as a glowing flame at your heart center. As you practice during class today, maybe you allow for anything that you notice that no longer serves you to gently be cast into that glowing fire at your heart center. If you'd like to invite some gentle movement now into the body, you can start to windshield wiper the knees from side to side, allowing the top knee to float down towards the bottom foot. Maybe turning your gaze in the opposite direction. Gently observing 
any sensations in the body. When you feel complete from left to right, you can hug your knees in towards your chest, maybe stretch your nose up towards your knees, curling into a little ball, and then softly lower your head. As you begin to bring your knees towards your armpits, you can walk your hands up to either behind the knees, onto the calves, down to the ankles. You might pause for a moment with your hands on your ankles and start to draw some circles with the feet. And then you might walk your hands up to your ankles or to your feet grasping hold of your feet. You might gently rock a little side to side, maybe land on one knee, stretching the opposite leg long, and then rocking to the opposite side, extending the other leg. Notice if you can cultivate a smile of gratitude on your face. Take one more nice deep breath in your happy baby pose. And then you can hug your knees and towards your chest and start to rock and roll up and down the length of your spine. Whenever you feel ready, you can rock up into a seat. You go ahead and find any comfortable seat, either cross-legged or maybe you'd prefer to sit on your heels in hero's pose. And then we'll get, begin to press the palms into the knees, lift the heart, and either close down the eyes or soften the gaze. Notice if you can allow the shoulders to gently melt down your back. And then soften your effort 10% more. On the next exhale, you can bow your head towards your heart. And then inhale, sweep the left ear over towards the left shoulder. Exhale, bowing back to center. Inhale, float the right ear towards the right shoulder. And you can continue this movement at your own pace. Take your time lengthening through your breath and invite any tension living along the side of the neck to release with your exhale. The next time your ear is floated over to the right side, Go ahead and pause there for a moment. And then you can start to gently shake your head no. Think about releasing which no longer serves you. Can you imagine those things softly, gently tossed into the fire at your heart center? Imagining yourself practicing tapas, And then we'll allow your head to fall back to center on your exhale. Sweep your left, left ear over towards your left shoulder. You can pause there for a moment. And then once more, start your gentle nose. Gently shaking the head no. Imagine releasing those things with grace and you might even acknowledge 
your appreciation, your gratitude for the tools that maybe no longer serve you. When you're ready, we'll come back to center. And then on your inhale, you can lift your head to center and blink your eyes open. You might either roll over the tops of your shins to come to tabletop, or you can spin your feet around, coming into hands and knees, planting the palms underneath the shoulders, the knees underneath the hips. From here, we'll take a few rounds of cat and cow. So you can inhale to drop the belly for cow pose. Exhale to round into the spine for cat. Take a few rounds of breath to explore these shapes at your own pace. After a few rounds of breath with cat and cow, it might feel good to explore other movements. Maybe you wanna draw a big circle with the belly button, stretching into all the different areas of the spine. You might start to bring your awareness into your spine and just notice what a miraculous design. All the different ways in which it can move. And then feel free to reverse the direction of your spine. Circles, if you're drawing a circle with the belly button. You might allow yourself a moment to pause. If you find any areas of sensation. Tuning in with compassion and curiosity. And then when you're ready, we'll meet back up in neutral. You can either explore child's pose or maybe you prefer downward dog. So you wanna bring your big toes to touch, open your knees up wide, sink your hips back. Walk your hands out in front and lower your forehead down to the mat if you're coming into child's pose. Find what works best for you and your body and decide if you prefer stillness or maybe you feel best with a little movement. Sometimes if you're in down dog for the first time, it might feel good to pedal your heels towards your mat, gently sashaying your hips a little side to side. Take another nice deep breath wherever you're at, and then we'll meet back up in hands and knees. So if you're coming from your down dog, you might even just take a moment to hover your knees over your mat and then softly land them down. From here, let's go ahead and come to our forearms. Give your wrist, wrists a little break and you can extend your right leg behind you, tuck the toes under and press the heel towards the mat. Finding length through the back of your calf, stretching through the heel. You might imagine like the wave of an ocean, your breath cascading down the back of your leg. Keep pressing the floor away, lifting your heart, imagining your heart floating to the back of your rib cage. On the next exhale, we'll release that knee down and then you can switch sides, extending your left leg back behind you, 
tucking your toes under, pressing your heel towards the mat. You might press into the shoulders, press into the earth, lift the heart and the chest. On the next exhale, you can lower that left knee right where it is and then step the right one back to meet it. And right now you're in a version of a forearm plank. If you'd like to find a little more challenge here, you could lift one knee or lift both knees to come into your forearm plank. Whatever version works best for you. Take a few rounds of breath, pressing the floor away, lifting the heart, engaging with the core. And then whenever you feel ready, you can soften onto your belly. Allow your belly to rock gently side to side and then stretch your legs back, untucking the toes, pressing the tops of the feet into the mat, press the palms into the mat and stack the elbows underneath the shoulders for sphinx pose. You can gently drag the floor towards you as you lift the heart. On the next exhale, take a peek behind your right shoulder. Inhale it back to center and then on your exhale, you can peek behind your left shoulder. On the next inhale, we'll come back to center. You can stack your palms, gently lower your head down to the back of your hands for crocodile pose. It might feel good for the low back to bend the knees and allow the heels to gently rock from side to side. Go ahead and quiet your feet down towards the mat. Allow yourself a moment here to rest, soften. Relaxing all of your effort. And then we'll lift the head and float the hands back behind you. Maybe you float the feet, lift the chest, coming into a locust pose. Take a few rounds of breath, balancing on the belly here. With the next exhale, go ahead and turn your gaze to the right and then soften all of your effort down to the ground. Allow your left temple to rest on the mat. Take a moment here to delight in this time of rest. You might feel a nice gentle stretch through the side of the neck, maybe that gentle pressure against your temple. And just like cleaning house, you might just allow yourself to sweep away any tension living there, inviting it to release with your breath. On the next inhale, we'll once more Lift the gaze, lift the arms, lift the legs, coming into locus. And this time you might bend the knees. Maybe one at a time, you reach back for one ankle and maybe the other ankle. And if it's not within reach, you can just reach in that direction. Start to kick your feet into your hands, your hands grasping hold of your feet. Take a nice deep breath here. And when you're ready, we'll release the feet. Turn your gaze to the left this time. Soften down to the earth. Ah. You might release an audible sigh. Ah. 
Relaxing here and maybe noticing the differences from left to right. How does the right side of your neck feel compared to the left side? Just allowing for once more compassion and curiosity. Take one more nice deep breath here, and then we'll plant the palms underneath the shoulders, tuck the toes under, press back up to our tabletop. And then from here, let's take a downward facing dog. So you can plant your palms out in front of your shoulders, tuck your toes under, press your hips up and back, and maybe take a few rounds of breath, pedaling your heels towards the mat, sashaying your hips a little side to side. Maybe it would feel good to find a three-legged dog, planting one foot, kicking the other foot up and behind you. Take one more nice deep breath here. And then whenever you feel ready, start to bend into the knees, allow the knees to hover for a moment over your mat. Feel that heat of tapas coming straight from your belly button. Go ahead and land the knees softly on the mat, and then we'll tuck the toes under or keep them tucked under. Start to walk the hands back towards the, the knees, and then you might come to sit on the heels. So this is blissful toe pose or broken toe pose. As you send gratitude all the way down into your toes, and thank them for all they do to support you. You might also ask them, what do they need from you to support them? As Soon as you're ready, we'll come off of the feet, walking the hands forward. You can untuck the toes and give them a loving tap. Then when you're ready, we'll walk the hands back in, come up to standing on the knees. You can bring your hands to your hips or to your heart center. And from here, we're going to come into a lunge. So we're gonna step the left foot forward. You can bring your hands onto your thigh now and you can stay right here. I'm gonna stay with my knee down, but sometimes people wanna be off of the knee and you can even tuck your back toes under. It's hard without blocks. See, I usually use, would use blocks here, but maybe you wanna tuck your back toe under and lift your back knee. So that would be coming into a high lunge. From here, you can float your arms up towards the sky, Lifting your heart, lifting your gaze, either Anjane Asana for low lunge or crescent moon for your high lunge. On the next exhale, bring the hands out in front like zombie arms and then float your left hand, which is the same hand as the knee that's out in front. Float that hand down like a pendulum and you can open into a twist. You can either keep your gaze out in front or maybe you start to turn your gaze towards your left hand behind you. On the next inhale, we'll float the hands back up to center Exhale, draw the hands to the heart center. And then however gracefully you can, you can return your back knee down to the mat. We'll step the hands to the inside of the foot 
walk the foot back to meet the opposite foot. So you're in your tabletop. And then let's pause here in either child's pose, downward dog. We'll take a little break in between sides. Or you can come to sit on the heels like I am in hero's pose. Whatever feels like the most restful place. As you come back to this restful place, come back into that warm fire of your intention. Once more, invite anything that no longer serves you to be tossed into that fire, fuel that fire. When you're ready, we'll come back to meet up in tabletop. And then you can bring your hands to your hips, come to stand on your knees. And then from here, we'll step the right foot forward for our lunge. And you can either stay with your back knee grounded or you might push up into a low lunge or a high lunge, lifting the back knee. Whenever you're ready, you can walk your hands to your thigh, to your hips or to your heart center. And then when you feel strong and stable in whatever position you're in, you can start to float your arms up towards the sky, lifting the heart and lifting the gaze. Allow your shoulders to soften away from your ears. Allow your heart to shine towards the sky. On the next exhale, bring your hands out in front. And then we're gonna continue with that twist on the right knee. You'll float the right hand down, sweep it down beside you. And then any amount, maybe turning your gaze back to look at your back hand. On the next inhale breath, we'll lift back up to center. Exhale, float your hands down. Maybe step them on the inside of your foot. And then you can walk that foot back, finding either tabletop, child's pose, or down dog. I should throw hero's pose into the mix too. This would be an option. Take a moment to tune your awareness into your breath. From here, we'll be meeting up in a forward fold. So feel free to get there however would feel good to you. You wanna walk straight to a forward fold or take a down dog and you can hop or walk to your forward fold. Feel free to give your belly enough space if you need to walk your feet a little wider than hips distance. You could wrap your hands around your opposite elbows just allow yourself a moment to ragdoll here, swaying gently side to side. Go ahead and release your arms now towards the ground and you can press your palms into the tops of your shins. Press an inhale for halfway lift. Ardha Uttanasana, exhale forward fold into Uttanasana. On the next inhale, bend into your knees, press into the earth and we'll rise up tall. Exhale, draw the hands to the heart center. 
Then you can release your hands to your sides and we'll come into mountain pose. Take a moment to close down your eyes or soften your gaze. Feel your feet rooting down into the earth. Allow yourself to feel that nourishment, that support of the earth. When you're ready, you can flutter your eyes open. And I thought for our standing balance, we could do dancer pose. <laughs> she loves it. So for dancer pose, we're going to root down through your left foot. And then imagine you are serving a platter of food. You can bring your right hand out to the side, your left hand to your hip, and then you might kick your hand, your foot into your hand. See about grabbing the inside of your foot. And we could stay right here. And you can also use the tree too. So if you wanted to stand by the tree, that would be another option. You could stay right here and find a gentle gaze, a dristy, someplace fixed on the ground. And then you might extend your arm out towards the, the sky. And then maybe you want to tip forward. Really in any movement that would make sense to you. This is, could be a nice thigh stretch. <laughs> Just practicing balance by kicking, really. Actually, yeah, it's I, quite hard. Do that base as well. Yeah, right. So feel free if you'd like to kick your foot into your hand, hinging forward from the hips, tipping like a teapot. And whenever you're ready, you can release that. <laughs> we'll step the feet out wide and oh, shake it all off. Maybe for a moment you notice a pail of water in between your hands, could you throw it over your shoulder? You could pick up your heel. All right, well, we're gonna just try the other side. And then remember, it's just a practice, right? Balance. So one thing we might notice is we think of balance as a fixed place, but really, to dance. <laughs> so now we're going to root down. Did we already do? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Root down on the right side. That's right. Kick your left heel into your hand. Well, you can serve it like a platter. And maybe it's just this today. Maybe at one point you can grasp hold of your foot. Ooh, give your foot a little squeeze, a little massage. Finding that dristy, that focal point, and it's okay to fall in and out. It's a dance. And your dance is unique to you. What does your dance look like today? Maybe you start to hinge from the hips, kicking the back foot into your hand, finding that dristy. Whenever you feel done with that side, you might notice, wow, that was quite a difference from left to right. Shake it all off. This is your palm tree pose. <laughs> Maybe sigh out through the mouth, let it go. When you're ready, we'll come back to center. Find your mountain pose, Tadasana. Feel once more the difference, really. How is it to have both feet on the ground compared to just one foot? Feel strong and steady like a mountain. 
Feel your earth rising up to your feet to meet you. And then when you're ready, you can flutter your eyes open. We'll sweep the hands up and overhead. Exhale to swan dive it forward. Inhale for halfway lift with a flat back. Exhale to forward fold. And then you can plant the palms, step the feet back. And maybe you want to try pigeon pose today. So if you'd like to try pigeon, you can bring your right knee towards your right palm and then slide the left leg back behind you. And you can stay with your hands upright. Oh, sorry, so my foot came under towards my left hand. Any amount that feels good to you. And then you might stay in an upright pigeon for a few rounds of breath. And at any moment, you can melt yourself forward. You might come onto your forearms and then stack your fists to make a little pillow to rest your forehead. And if pigeon is not feeling comfortable for you for any reason, we have other options. So just let me know if anybody wants a different choice today. That would be probably figure four on your back. Take a nice deep breath here. Breathing into your hips. Allowing yourself to soften. Notice where you can relax your effort. On the next exhale, we'll roll onto that right hip and then you can swing your left knee towards your right foot. So your legs are in what we call deer shape or a pinwheel. And then we'll inhale to float the arms up and overhead. Exhale, turn towards that front knee, bringing the left hand onto the right knee stepping the right hand behind you and turning your gaze over your shoulder. Beautiful. On the next exhale, you can bow your head towards your heart. And then we'll sweep the gaze past that front shoulder, the left shoulder. In the same direction your toes are pointing. So you might see your feet in your peripheral gaze. Send some nice deep breaths into any areas of tension. And then when you're ready, we'll unwind from that twist and we'll get ready for the other side. So you might start in downward dog. From your downward dog, you can maybe stay here for a few rounds of breath, but whenever you're ready to enter into your pigeon shape, you're gonna bring that left knee forward and land the left knee, walking the left foot over in the direction of the right hand. And then you can extend the right leg back behind you Start out maybe in an upright pigeon, sending some breath into the hips. If and when you want to lower your heart down towards the ground, you might stack your fists to make a pillow to rest your forehead. If that feels too far away, you can always just stay upright. Sending some nice deep breaths into the hips.
Take one more nice deep breath here and then we'll roll onto that left hip, bring your feet in a pinwheel shape. And then you can inhale to float the arms up towards the sky. Exhale to turn to the left, bringing your right hand onto your left knee, sweeping your left hand behind you. Turn your gaze over your left shoulder for a twist. Imagine just like a sponge, you're able to wring out any tension from the spine. And then on the next exhale, you can bow your head towards your heart, sweep your chin towards your chest, and then turn your gaze behind your front shoulder, your right shoulder. On the next inhale, we'll release that twist. And you can come onto your seat with your knees pointed up towards the sky. Take a moment to windshield wiper your knees a little side to side. And then we are headed towards our final resting pose, Shavasana. I always like to give you an opportunity to finish your practice before Shavasana with any other shapes that you feel would complete your practice today. Maybe headed down towards your mat, you wanna play around with Navasana boat pose, reaching your arms forward, maybe tipping back to lift one or both feet off the ground. Find a little strength in your core. And then whenever you feel ready, you can make your way slowly onto your back body, either coming back to our original shape, constructive rest, or finding corpse pose, Shavasana, lying flat on your back. As you begin to arrive in your final rest, imagine there's a magical bubble machine at your heart. Allow those bubbles to bubble up from your heart center. As you rest heavy here, you might imagine for a moment lying on a cool slab of clay. Imagine your body making an impression on that slab of clay. this unique impression that is you. There is none other just exactly like you. Coming back to the words of Deborah Adele on the theme of tapas, self-discipline, she says, somewhere we forget, we had to learn how to walk. 
I forget how many times we fell. I forget that things take practice. The question for us becomes, what are we practicing for? To become something in the future takes effort in the now. In yoga, having a daily discipline practice is referred to as sadhana. Sadhana. It is the discipline of putting ourselves in places where the old debris that has collected in us can be removed. We engage in this process when we pay attention to the amount and kind of food we put in our bodies. When we move and exercise our bodies with walks, yoga, and other activities, when we expand our mental ability or study scripture with like-minded people. As Patabi Joyce reminds us, practice and all is coming. St. Francis of Assisi in his well-known prayer speaks eloquently to the possibilities of transformation for each human being. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith where there is despair hope where there is darkness light where there is sadness joy Start to notice 
a gentle caress, the wind on your skin. Turn your awareness into the chirping of the birds. Take a moment to float your awareness out into the universe. Gaze lovingly back at your unique form there, resting, supported. Observe that glowing fire within you. Take a moment to sense that awe and wonder at what a miracle it is to be here today alive in this unique time and place. Like none that has ever come before will never happen the exact same way ever again. Allow your awareness to drift down back into your body. And as you sense those bubbles of gratitude from your heart center, cascading down into your fingertips and toes, start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Maybe gently rotating your wrists and your ankles. When you're ready, you can find a long body stretch, reaching your arms past your ears. And then go ahead and roll onto one side and find a fetal position, cradling your head on your upper arm. You can pause here for a few rounds of breath. And then whenever you feel ready, use the strength of your hands to press you back up into a seat. You can find your comfortable seat. And then invite your hands to meet at your heart center. An Anjali Mudra. To close down our practice today, you're welcome to join me in either chanting or listening to one round of Om, and then we can sing together Shanti, 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 which means peace, 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 to ourselves, to each other, and for the rest of the world. Go ahead and take a nice deep breath for Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. You can allow your head to bow towards the wisdom of your loving heart. The light in me sees and honors and appreciates the light in each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining me for your practice this morning. Remember, next Sunday is birthday yoga, if you can make it. <laughs> I'm actually the last Leo and like the first Virgo. So it's, 